you want to build a Discord bot? Heard some bad things about Discord bots on Replit? Well, we fixed it. Yes, all the rate limit issues have been solved by our remarkable engineers. You should now be able to spin up and utilize a Discord bot all the time with very few issues. I'm very excited about this. With less dancing, let's get on with it. So in this course, we're not going to build just any old Discord bot because everyone and their nan can build a bot that responds to comments. My nan runs quite a successful Discord server about knitting. She has almost 36 members. We're going to build a currency bot. Now, if you don't know what that is, that's a very simple game that you can play in your server where you have balances of money, the ability to bank that money, the ability to buy items, and importantly, the ability to do things like steal money from other users. We'll be building all these things over the next six lessons, but we're gonna start in the simplest place possible. And of course, this lesson is perfect if you just wanna get a Discord bot up and running. The first thing we do with any Discord bot is first of all, set things up on Discord. So follow the link from the tutorial pane and get to the Discord developer portal. We're gonna go and create a new application here and give it a sensible name. Agree to the policy and off we go. Now we've created our first application. Let's set it up with a few customizations. We've already given it a name, but let's give it a description and a few tags, as well as adding an app icon so that any interaction that the bot has with another user is a bit more personalized. Okay, let's get in there and build our bot. After clicking on bot, we're gonna click add bot. We'll say yes, do it. I need my two-factor authentication code here. Now the bot's been built, but it didn't give us our security token. So I'm just gonna reset that because we need that to be able to access the bot programmatically. Copy that code using the copy button and make sure that you tick a few more boxes. If you scroll down to intents, we're gonna tick all of these because we are gonna to want to update our presence. We are gonna to want to understand which members are on our servers and we are gonna to want to access message content. Last but not least, we're gonna go and add our bot to our server. We're gonna to go to OAuth2 and then click on URL generator. We're building a bot, so tick that. And in terms of bot permissions, you might want to be quite granular on this when you finish your bot off. But for the purposes of development, I'm just gonna make it an admin. And at the bottom, our generated URL is what we need to add our bot to our server. Click copy and paste it in to URL. We're gonna select the server we want to add the bot to and click continue. We'll validate that we're a human and then boom, our bot should be added to our server. Now our bot is offline at the moment and that's because we haven't actually coded anything yet. So we're done with Discord now, we can get back into our REPL and work from there. We're gonna go and create a new Python file. Now you might be tempted to look at the templates and there are a bunch of Discord templates. I'm gonna suggest that you make a blank Python template because this will give you the most up-to-date version of Python and therefore allow us to do a few more things with a bit less whinging than we'd otherwise be able to. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is take that secret that we copied a few minutes ago and put it in our secrets. Go to your tools menu and click secrets, name the key token, capital letters, and paste your value in. Click save. This stores the key for your Discord bot in a secure place that can't be accessed by anybody else who looks at the code for your REPL. So even if you don't make this REPL private and with a Discord bot, it's always a good idea to do that, you'll be protected at least in some sense. Now, if you want to make your REPL private, you're gonna go up to the name and click on private. You'll be prompted to pay cycles for that, which is currently 500 cycles a month. That's well worth it if you ask me, because having your code available to other users when you're running a Discord bot gives people the chance to poke around and find all the little nuances and weird things that you've coded into it and exploit that. Now again, you don't need private REPLs, but it's a good thing to have. Also available with the hacker plan if you'd rather get that. First job, we need to import some libraries. We're gonna import Discord and OS. We need both of these because we need to connect to Discord and we need to use the OS library itself to pull in the secret. Now I've got Ghostwriter turned on. Ghostwriter is our AI programming assistant. So if you see massive swathes of code being suggested to me, that's what's happening here. If you haven't got Ghostwriter, you can just type this stuff straight in. So the first line needs to be client equal. That creates a variable for my connection and I'm going to make an event for my client, which is 
on ready. Now there's a few things here that are quite important. That at terminology just says, it just says this is something that's gonna work with the client and it's called an event. Now this is a new type of programming for a lot of people. This is not traditional programming where we just write a lot of information in a file and let the code deal with it. This is event driven programming where the user does something and calls a different part of our code. So we need to define those. I'm defining my first client event. So it's when something happens to my Discord client and it's an asynchronous event, which means it's not 100% certain that we'll get something back from it, but we'll assume we will. And I'm gonna call it on ready. Now on ready is a built-in event type, which means as soon as the Discord bot has connected and it's ready to go, it can do something. We're simply gonna print out in our console a message to tell us that it's connected. And using this F string syntax, I'm gonna bring in the name our bot connects with. I'm then going to actually connect the bot. I'm gonna put this in a try accept construct. Now what this means is it will try to do what's on line 10, and if it fails for any reason, it'll do what's after line 11. In this case, we're gonna try and run the client or to the Discord server using our token. And if we have any problems, we'll put the error on the screen. So let's go for it. Well, we had an error straight away. Now this is something quite important and lots of Discord guides miss this out. We do need to tell our bot what its intents are. And you might be thinking, what does that have to do with anything? Those boxes we ticked when we set our bot up tell it what intents it could have, the ability to read messages, the ability to access user accounts, things like that. All of these are gonna be important for our currency bot. So let's explicitly tell it what to do. We'll pop up before we set up the client and we'll create a variable called intents. That's gonna be equal to discord.intents.default, which are the basic intents. And inside our client connection, inside the brackets, I'm gonna say intents, intents, which passes the intents over. If I click run now, you'll see our Discord bot connects to our server and tells us it's logged in and what as. And if we go over to our server, you can see that our Discord bot is now online. Happy days! Why don't you go and get your bot connected up and make sure that it can connect to the server and tell you that it's connected. Okay, next up, we're going to actually reply to a message when it's posted on the server. And we're gonna do this in the most straightforward way ever. We're gonna start by adding a new event and this event is going to be on message. And this is perfectly normal, this is a built-in one. This means when a message is received anywhere in the server. One little thing here is in the brackets, I'm writing message. This just gives a variable name to the message that we receive so we can refer to it and mess around. The first thing is something that you pretty much always want to put in there. The code that basically says, if the bot has posted a message, you can ignore it. And this is pretty straightforward. It's saying, if the author of the message is the same as me, i.e. the bot, then let's just return nothing. Let's stop what we're doing and stop this subroutine. And that's important because otherwise you can get yourself in a loop. And that loop is horrendous because what will happen with that is that the bot will reply to a message and then reply to its message and so on and so on and so on forever. So now we've dealt with that possible case, let's have a look at something simple. I'm gonna use message.content starts with, so I don't reply to every single message. I'm gonna look for dollar sign hello. This is a standard test phrase. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to post a message to that server to say hello back to any user that says dollar hello to me. The way we do that is with a special kind of command, an await command. Once again, this is asynchronous, which means we send it off to the server and it's not gonna happen straight away, but it'll happen in a reasonable amount of time but we can get on with some other code whilst it's waiting to do its business. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the message, I'm gonna look in the channel that the message arrived in, and I'm gonna use send. So I'm just gonna send a message straight back into the channel that I noticed the message in. And I'm just gonna say hello. Let's run this and try this out. Wow, oh, well, that didn't work. Again, what's the problem here? Well, oh, well, let's go back. And there's no error message, so everything's working properly. Well, spoilers, it's our intents again. The default set of intents doesn't allow us to actually find out anything about the user or send any messages. So let's add those in. Let's add message content equals true so we can access the message and let's add members equals so we can access information about the users. So without changing any code now, if I do dollar sign hello, boom, I get my message back. Now this is great and our Discord bot is working beautifully. Why don't you now go and set your Discord bot up so it replies to a simple message? So. 
There is one limitation what you've got here. The Discord bot is connected and will stay connected for as long as that REPL is awake. However, REPLs do turn themselves off occasionally and certainly turn themselves off if you close that window down and leave it for a few minutes. This is perfectly normal. If you want your Discord bot to always be available and always be answering messages because the moment it stops, this is what happens. And this isn't great because if you've built a Discord bot that users expect to be active, you need it to be always on. Coincidentally, that's how you get it to be always on. Clicking the name slug and activating always on for the very reasonable price of 20 cycles a day, which means if your Discord bot ever dies or stops, we'll restart it straight away, which means your REPL will never be manually turned off, so once you run it, it'll stay running for as long as it can. And if your REPL ever gets turned off for any reason, we'll simply restart it straight away. So the downtime for your bot will be absolutely minimal. Now, I'm sure that some of you have Googled and done this before. I'll know that there are certain things you can do to try and keep your Discord bot awake. Now, all of those methods are not supported by us, so they could fail at any time, and they honestly lead to a bit of a bad experience because your Discord bot just isn't up all the time. Paying the cycles and using always on is the way to go with this. And this is certainly how I run my Discord bots. Always on is the way to go. Don't forget as well, you get one always on REPL with your hacker plan, as well as a bunch of other features like a boost that follows you around and those private REPLs we talked about earlier. That's well worth purchasing for only $7 a month because you get access to a bunch of these features. And if all you want to do is build a Discord bot, then it's a nicer way of paying for that. Okay, your challenge then. With your Discord bot all set up, I'd like it to reply to any message at all, a repeat of the message it's received. It's a bit of a silly task, but it'll get you to put in a new event and it'll get you to change the way that the message sends are working and also looking at the content of that message. Hint, hint. Don't worry if you don't get that, we'll be dealing with that in the next lesson anyway. Of course, when you're done, feel free to share your code by publishing the community and use the hashtag DiscordBots on Replit. Next time we see you, we'll be looking at responding directly to users' messages and add a database component that means that we can track whether we've ever seen these users before. That's gonna be pretty cool. And just being more of a useful Discord bot, really. <laughs>